it's okay, it's okay Renee, you did fine. Kia ora everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee. Uh, we've got another sit down video today. Just cranking them out. It is that weird time between Christmas and New Year where I have no idea what day it is. I haven't quite relaxed into holiday mode yet so I thought I would film a video for you. Today we're going to be reflecting on the year that was 2021 on my reading. Look back at some of the goals that I made uh, as a little baby in the literary world of reading and see how far I've come. And then we're also going to set some new intentions for 2022. I love a fresh start. I love a chance to sit down, um, look at the goals that we set, we as in me, see how I've done, think about maybe what I want to change or things that worked for me, things that I wanted to do but then in the end didn't really care for at all. I always like to have some kind of goal set and things to focus on in order to kind of feel accomplished at the end of the year. So yeah, we're just gonna start by going back to this little journal that I wrote in 2021, January 2021, and see what we've got here. So, 2021 reading goals were to read 35 books. Okay, so I definitely can take that one off the list. I read 35 books and then I decided to change my reading goal to 50 and then I met that as well. I'm currently sitting at 51 books finished for 2021. I feel great about having read 50 books. That's the most books I've read in a year ever. My reading definitely ramped up this year, especially in the last kind of half of the year. I think YouTube helped a lot with that. Second reading goal for 2021 was to read more men, BIPOC, uh, queer writers. This was something that I for some reason thought was necessary to read more men. Um, I don't think that happened. I'm not mad about it to be honest. I am however a little bit upset about not reading as many um, BIPOC writers or uh, queer writers. Um, I remember reading James Baldwin and thinking he ticked quite a lot of those boxes so I don't know I guess after that point I kind of just thought forgot about it and um, continued to read my kind of bread and butter uh, of women writers. Yeah definitely something that I think I want to relook at again for this year. And my sec third reading goal was to read more poetry and classics. I read zero poetry this year. Poetry has always been a really hard thing for me. I find it very kind of intimidating as a genre. It's just, it scares me. So I definitely didn't meet that goal this year. Classics, I feel like I also probably didn't quite meet that goal this year. I've read no classics that I can think of off the top of my head. In fact, I'm gonna just quickly have a look. It's like, what is considered a classic? I don't even know. Yeah, and then there's like mm, nothing here. There's an Oscar Wilde book and a Nene Nin. I would maybe consider those classics, but other than that, Oh, I read The Outsiders by E.C. Hinton. Didn't like it. Um, yeah, didn't read any classics this year either, so it's another goal, not me. Uh, start annotating and keep notes. So I started this journal, which was, I started it, that's great. I didn't utilize it as much as I would have liked to. 
again, I'm not um, like going to beat myself up about that because I used it when I needed to. I don't think every single book needs to be annotated or you need to have write, written notes for everything you read. Sometimes I like to just read a book without the thought of having to underline or do anything. It's nice to just be able to read it and just finish it and that be that and even sometimes not even think about it afterwards so yeah I definitely enjoyed the journaling part of keeping a like a reading journal um and I think I want to continue it into the to the next year annotating was something that I also started for the first time and uh, yeah it worked for me when I needed it I found it really helpful with some books books like Dune I felt like that really Sorry about the birds making lots of noise now. Bloody nature. Um, yeah, I felt like Dune really benefited from me annotating it. I got a lot more out of it. I was able to understand more. Not every book needs that, so. Um, my other reading goal was read two to three hours a day. I don't think that happened at all. I prioritise reading a lot more over anything else this year which was fantastic um, I still would like to work on cutting down my hours spent on my phone but then again it's like sometimes you need those things you can't always be like this perfect human who never uses their phone and is always spending their spare time doing productive things at the end of the day when I feel like I need it I don't want to ever make myself feel guilty about watching TV or Fucking staring at the wall for an hour. And the other one was read before sleep, so no phone before bed. Definitely was a bit iffy on that one. I think I did like okay. I start, definitely started a lot of um, good practices. Maybe uh, some of them slipped to the wayside a little bit, but that's okay. The thing I love about a new, a fresh start, a new year, is the chance to kind of pick those things back up again and try them again. Looking ahead. 2022. I'm really looking forward to this year. I think for me it's been an exciting year of going into uh, two literary communities, um, Bookstagram and Booktube, and kind of feeling my way around, discovering what I like, so many amazing new writers that I've come across this year and ones that I want to read so I just feel like this really immense sense of excitement about all the books that I have on my shelf currently. The potential for amazing things is endless in 2022. But yeah I've written down some some goals again. Okay so first one is always the number for me. I know numbers don't mean anything but again it's always a good thing to kind of work towards. I didn't read much at all the first part of last year so I really feel like this goal is achievable. I'm going to try and read 75 books in 2022 um, and we'll just see how we go with that. Okay the second one is not really a goal but more of a kind of, I guess it is a goal in a way. These are all goals. It's just a reminder for me is that I want to read more from my own shelves. I have so many unread books on my shelves, it's embarrassing. Um, but again, I don't want to make myself feel bad about it. It is what it is. I don't feel bad about it, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I look at my bookshelves every day and I'm like, that is some sexy ass shit right there. It's just a reminder to myself that you have an amazing collection on your shelf. Don't get distracted by new and pretty things all the time. Uh, and saying that, my very next one is to use my local library more, which is part of that, I think, trying to curb that I want shiny new things all the time, is to use my local library so that I don't just um, go out, buy what I want, and then it sits on my shelf for ages. I want to utilize my local library if there's a book that I really really want to read go and get it read it and then decide if it's something that I want to add to my library yeah I'm gonna as I'm going with these reading goals I'm gonna show you some books that I have that kind of apply
apply to some of these. So I've got four books from my local library at the moment that I want to read. Um, the first one is The Performance by Claire Thomas. Um, this is a story about four women, three women, uh, who are sitting through the performance of a Samuel Beckett play. It's kind of like their inner thoughts as the play is being performed. Um, yeah, sounds quite good. It's got very few words on the page, so it seems like it's something that would be quite easy to get through. Um, next I have The Shame by McKenna Goodman. This is a perfect example of a book that I have wanted to read, have almost bought several times, but I've got it out from my library. If I read it and if I love it, and if I still want to own it, then I can buy it. Um, next I have Event Tide by Therese Bowman. This is a translated piece of fiction. It's about a, a professor who is in her 40s. She's just um, gone through a long-term relationship breakup and is kind of discovering herself. Uh, I think it's translated from the Swedish, so yeah, keen for that. And then the last one that I have is Super Sad True Love Story by Gary Steinhardt. This was a book recommended by, to me by my friend Lachlan. Um, yeah, he, I asked for some recommendations after reading a book that I didn't really enjoy too much. And he told me this one, so I thought I'd get it up from my library. It sounds super different. It's like a kind of dystopian love story. Um, but he said it's really good, so let's give that a go. So the next uh, reading goal was to read, me so I wanted to add back onto this, read more queer, non-binary um, stories and writers. So the stack that I have for this is some tinies. Um, first I have If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. I read Giovanni's Room. Um, this year and I really loved it so very much want to read more of James Baldwin. Um, next I have Lie With Me by Philip Besson. This is a queer love story between um, about two young boys. have heard so many amazing things about um, this book and it is translated by Molly Ringwald which I think is so cool. Um, the next one is all Men Want to Know by Nina Burawi. This is a very fragmentary kind of autofiction um, short guy about Nina's life. Um, her family grew up and her mother is French and her father is Alger Algerian. So it kind of tells the story of her growing up in two very different worlds um, and being uh, closeted towards to her family, to her mother. Yeah, and really short kind of chapters, um, snippets of her story going to clubs and discovering this really kind of queer, vibrant nightlife in Paris. have again, heard so many good things about that one. Uh, then I have Fresh Water by Akweke Inizi. I have not read any of Akweke's um, writing and have heard... So many good things about it. A very diverse writer who uh, writes memoir, YA, literary um, fiction. Yeah, so this is a non-binary writer who I'm definitely um, keen to get into. Um, and then finally, I have A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. This is like a classic kind of... Um, queer story about an older man who loses his lover and it, I think it tells the story over like a day or so. Um, I've seen the film and I think it's a really great film so why not read the, the book that it's based on. Um, the next reading goal was to read more short stories and read more single short stories. So um, Jalen from The Bar in the Bookcase recently did a video on some of his favourite uh, single short stories um, from the year and I it just reminded me 
how much I love short stories, but also just how much you can kind of uh, get from just a single short story. You don't have to, I guess, necessarily be completely enamored by a whole collection. A one, sh a single short story can do a lot for you, and I think that it's okay to to have those as some of your favorites. So he kind of reminded me about some of the collections that I own that I want to kind of dip in and out of this year and treat more like single short stories that I don't need to rush through, I don't need to read the collection, you know, in one go. Um, so yeah, that's one of my kind of plans for the year is just to maybe constantly have a collection on the go that I can just um, take my time with. So one of the first ones is uh, collected stories by Grace Palais. She has there are three collections inside of this um, big collection. So there's the little disturbances of man, enormous changes at the last minute, and later the same day. So have heard so many good things about her writing, um, and was super glad to find this. Um, collection of all of them so it's definitely something that I feel like I can read along other things just little bits at a time and uh, the next one that I have is this penguin uh, book of Italian short stories which was edited by Jumpa Lahiri she was um, someone who I really enjoyed her translation uh, writing this year and so when I saw this I thought um, even better. I've really been enjoying uh, Italian writing and uh, stories and fiction set in Italy this year. There are so many writers on the back, so many that I don't know. There's like only a couple on here that I do. There's like Primo Levi, um, there's Italo Calvino, uh, and then somebody else. Natalia Ginsberg. So, yeah. Very excited to dip into that one. Uh, and then the last one that I have is a collector stories of Deborah Eisenberg. This is another massive collection that I was so happy to find secondhand. Um, but again, it's like super intimidating to think about sitting down with this book in one go. So why not take your time with it? Why not read it in parts? Go over it, like read and reread and really treat it as a kind of a meditation. This would be my poetry this year, I think. That's my little short stories goal for the year. Okay, um, one of my other reading goals or like things that I want to try and do this year is curb my spending. I already mentioned like not wanting to just go out and rush out and buy shiny new books. I definitely used by, uh, book buying is a way of dealing with stress and anxieties this year. While I don't necessarily think that it's like a bad thing, um, I'm definitely running out of room and I can't be spending all my money on books. Well, I can, but you know, it is what it is. It's just one of those things that I want to try and be better at this year. I don't want to just be buying any old book. I want to really be deliberate about the books that I'm buying this year, what I'm adding to my library. Sometimes I just want that hit of retail therapy and it's not necessarily like being spent in the best way. So yeah, just being a lot more thoughtful about it, what it is that I am buying. Not buying crap, that's the goal of the year. Just don't, don't just buy it because it's there. Do you really want to read it? Is it something that um, you can either get from the library or even can you wait? Like, do you need it now? That kind of thing. Uh, and then the last little reading goal that I have on my uh, list is read outside my comfort zone. So I would say that my comfort zone is very much short books written by women about women and their kind of interior thoughts as you move through their daily lives. Um, 
that is what I find comfort in reading. Uh, I like to have a lot of my own thoughts, feelings, frustrations mirrored back to me and the things that I read, uh, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing, but I definitely want to branch out of that a little bit more this year. Um, and I would say that the opposite of that is definitely uh, big books written by men, mostly about men. Um, so I have a few of those here. Well, I have three. Um, the first one that I have is The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. Uh, if I'm being honest, this is kind of the only book of his that I'm interested in reading at all. Uh, it's about kind of a dysfunctional family saga. I think it has multiple narratives. Definitely themes that I'm interested in, uh, but it's just a book that I have had on my shelf for years, like four years, that I've just been putting off. So this year I definitely want to read it. Um, this edition is so like yellowed. It's awesome. But yeah, very much uh, outside my comfort zone, I think. Have heard so many good things about it though, so excited for that. Um, the next one is one that I picked up recently, and that is 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. This is a definitely outside of my comfort zone, but again, something that kind of intrigues me enough that I wanted to pick it up, so I did. Uh, it's a multiple narrative story that kind of stretches over a long period of time. Uh, yeah, a lot of what I've heard from this is that it, it's a hard book but it's definitely worth it so yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see uh and the last one on the big big men big books uh, list is 1q84 by haruki murakami this is actually a book that i started reading on my kindle uh, a couple of years ago and i was actually really enjoying it but for some reason i stopped and never picked it up again um, so I definitely want to try and read it again this year. I have this beautiful hardcover edition, but I definitely will be reading it on my Kindle because there ain't no way I'm carrying this thing around. It is two stories that are running simultaneously and then at some point they converge. Um, it kind of has a sense of like magical realism about it. I didn't get very far into the story at all before I stopped so I don't really want to know much more about it because I don't. So that is me for goals and tensions for 2022. Let me know what you're planning on doing in the year to come. Whether you are planning on reading any of the books that I mentioned, if you have read any of them, what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is probably going to go out before New Year, so I hope you have a wonderful New Year, and I'll see you in 2022, baby. Okay, kakite.